Next, we have Micah from uh, NVIDIA. He's going to talk about extensions to Onyx for multi-device support. Hi, uh, my name is Mike Vilmo. I am a principal engineer on the Tenstar team here at uh, NVIDIA, and I'm going to talk about uh, multi-device extensions to Onyx. The motivation for this is the trend in large language models is pushing the size of Onyx models past not only a single device, but often a single node. Uh, in, a, in a way, in a high-performance computing environment, you need to optimize both the computation and the networking operations to efficiently execute your models. There's no way to represent this in Onyx today, and so you have to write lots of custom software handling both the Onyx subgraphs on a per device and the communication ops across the devices. So what I'm proposing here is some extensions to Onyx so that we can represent the entire thing in Onyx without massively increasing the number of ops and with minor changes to a network. Some of the new concepts I'm going to introduce here is an instance. An instance is a virtual device that executes a part of the neural network uh, on Onyx. Second one is a topology. A topology is a multi um, hierarchical ordering of instances for multiple devices. The next one is a tiling pattern. It's a vector of uh, length, rank of the tensor, or it's a scalar one that specifies how do you split a tensor across devices. The tile is the segment of the tensor that is executed on an individual instance. And then the tiling assignment is how you map the tiles to the instances themselves. And then there's a new um, concept called a tensor dictionary. A tensor dictionary is the representation of all the tensors across devices. So first let's talk about the topology. The topology is a new protobuf entry with two fields. The first is the instance count, and this is the maximum number of instances the model is being built for. The second one is the instance map. This is a list of lists, and it contains, uh, for each instance, you have up to n instances as part of the sublist. And so this is how you map the different topologies. Now, this is just what the model extension looks like, but it's a lot easier to show you examples. So in the top left corner, we have what's called a fully connected mesh. You have a four node in a four node topology where every instance is connected to every other instance. In the bottom left um, corner, you have what a representation of a binary tree topology. And then the bottom right corner, you have a disjoint ring with a single cross link. This can be used to represent two nodes with three instances on each node with a single instance that can communicate between nodes. Now, in practice, this is not what used in industry. What are used in industry is a torus. So we have here examples of a 1D, 2D, and 3D toruses, and they all can be represented with this approach. Um, some of the other extensions is you have to extend the tensors themselves. So there's two, two extensions of tensors. They're both optional, so you don't need them. But if you want to do the, if you want to be explicit on how you tile and how you assign, you'll need to use these two new fields. The first field is the tiling pattern. As I mentioned, this is a, a a vector of the same rank as the tensor or to scalar one. And so you would divide each dimension by whatever values you have in the tiling pattern to figure out how you do your tiling. If it's a scalar one, then you divide everything by one and match it out to your tiling instance. The tiling, ins the tiling assignment is how you assign the tiles to the instances themselves. So you can do some kind of shuffling of your ordering. And using these two, I'll hopefully help you understand that you can handle all of the multi-device um, <laughs> shuffles or broadcasts you need. Now, what I have here is the formulas to do the start, stop, and size computations. Um, I'm not going to go into this as this is fairly complicated, but I want to pu put it up here if people want to go look at it later. Instead, I'm going to go through some simple examples. The first two are the sort of the identity example. They should be fairly self-explanatory. But I want to go through in detail the third example. So we have a two-dimensional tensor that's seven by four. And then we have five, a tiling pattern that's five by one. So that means we have five different tiles on a seven by four um, tensor, and we have five instances to assign it to. Now, the instances are not in linear order. They're semi-random, so you can change the ordering. And what I've computed here in the center box is the tile start, the tile stop, and the tile size for all five instances. 
Now, if you're going to take a seven by four tensor and map it to five instances, there's multiple ways you can do this. But using the formats I provided, it shows that both instance zero and instance four have sizes of two by four, whereas instances one, two, and three have sizes of one by four. And then in the bottom row, what we have is a the broadcast situation. So we have a three-dimensional tensor of two by four by eight. We have a single tiling pattern, so you divide everything by one. And then we have two instances of instance three and instance two. So that means we're creating a tiling pattern for the third and second instance in a four instance system. Um, so if you use the formulas on this, you'll end up with both of them have the start and stop equal to the entire tensor and the tile size is the entire tensor itself. So now I've talked about, about how you do the tiling and uh, how you do the assignment. But what's important here is the tensor dictionary. So tensor dictionary is how you represent a tensor with these two fields. Now, by default, everything is a tensor for a single device. So every Onyx model you have today fits in this framework. It has a one tiling pattern and it has one tiling instance and it's assigned to one instance, which is zero. So everything you have today, all the Onyx stuff works today. Now, if you want to do say a uh, data parallel and you just want to run the same network across two devices. All you do is you keep the first um, tiling pattern the same and then you just add a second instance to every uh, node or every tensor. But say you want to do say like a tensor parallel, you know, split the tensors across two devices. Then you just have to figure out at every tensor, how do you want to split the tensor? So you add in a two comma one tiling pattern and then you again set everything to two instances. Um, I have another example of 3D tensors split across six devices. But how do you create a tensor dictionary? How do you index into them? And how do you extract tensors from that tensor dictionary? Now, earlier they talked about not wanting to add lots of ops. And so one of the approaches for this is, or one of the benefits of this is we only add two new ops, an instant join and an instant split. An instance join op takes two tensors and creates a tensor dictionary. Now, what, how it does is, is the first input to instance join becomes the first instance location, the instance assignment location, and the second input to instance join becomes the second instance assignment location. Now, on the right graph, we have the instance split. So I'm taking a tensor dictionary that is tiled four ways across four instances, and I'm splitting it out into four individual tensors that are also tiled four ways. But what you'll notice here is there is a zero and then three negative ones. The negative ones means that that tile is suppressed for that uh, tensor or sort of that tensor dictionary. And so what we'll have is four tensors that are tiled four ways and they're assigned to four different instances. And you can treat these just like a normal tensor or anything else. Now, the reason you would need this is to do communication. And so we also with the instance join, you can combine both the um, single instance tiles and tensors along with another tensor dictionary. So that's how you can combine uh, multiple different paths if you have parallelism across different device devices or different subgroups. So once you have all this, how do you actually evaluate it at runtime and when you're importing it? Um, so the first thing you have to do is you have to do shape inference. Now, the assumption here is all your tensors have been specified explicitly. If there's implicitly, the importer needs to go and propagate the, however they feel. Um, but by default, we're assume here that everything is specified. So you do your shape inference, which is an input to output flow, and then you have to do an output to input communication inference to find out where you need to insert your communication primitives if they are required. So this is a naive implementation just to give you just something what you can do. But if it's a scalar input and a vectorized output, you just input a broadcast in on the input and then use your tiling pattern. If it's a vector input and then a scalar output, you do compute everything and then you input an all gather operation. And if there's a vector output and a vector input, you put it all gather on all the inputs, compute everything everywhere, and then use the tiling patterns on your outputs. Now, again, it's inefficient. It's not what you want to do in practice, but it functionally does work. So that's the presentation. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, I guess uh, because you're doing you're adding these splits to a graph. It's yeah. pretty hardware specific. You'd want a certain splits because you might have a certain amount of memory on a specific chip. Yep. However, part of, I guess, the appeal of Onyx is that it's hardware agnostic. Um, do you think it's the right level of abstraction to be doing this um, in the Onyx model itself and adding this to ProtoBuff? 
So the question was, is this the right level of extraction for something that's supposed to be hardware agnostic? Um, in practice, in multi-device inferencing, and uh, even in multi-device training, you sort of know what hardware you're going to be running on and what the topology is. Um, I don't, I have not yet figured out a way to do this in a hardware agnostic way. Now, there's been, there's ways we could extend this so that we have um, different hardware models and different pro, uh, like basically you can have a hardware vendor specific topology, but that's why I'm bringing this up as a proposal to the Onyx community so that we can discuss all the different variations. Um, I think his hand was up first. So following up on that question, does this assume a homogeneity in hardware? For example, if you know, going with the vendor abstraction or vendor abstracted model, if you have different hardware types from different vendors, could you still apply, apply this approach to get the most efficient use of the model? So this is why I talk about it as an instance that executes a, a slice of the model. How, where, what hardware it maps to is dependent on the importer to decide. So we could, uh, on some of our embedded devices, we support both GPU and DLA. We could map instance zero to GPU, instance one to DLA, and it, it should still work correctly. Now, that's up to the importer to decide. Um, how it maps to the hardware is not defined here. It's just how, it, how the tensor maps to the virtual device or the instance is what's defined. And you can even map if you want your hardware big enough, it don't, doesn't need multi-device, you can then take it and say, these two instances map to one device. But that's an implementation detail and it's not required by the uh, specification. Yeah. Where can we put in your comments about your proposal? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm, we should, we should probably introduce yeah. the proposal as a PR then. Yeah, so this is just to bring the idea up so I can get some feedback. Um, before writing an official uh, proposal. And then that's where I guess the more discussions will happen. Any questions on the bridge? Uh, no, I don't see any. Awesome.